In this series of videos I'm attempting to repair this Mimi 801 vintage computer. In the previous video in this series I got as far as getting the machine to start trying to access the floppy disk drive and uh, up to that point it had a, a lot of faults and uh, there was anything from faulty ICs through to damaged tracks and uh, damaged wiring um, corroded connections, all manner of things and I uh, had to overhaul the two disk drives. There are two disk drives in this uh, machine but I've removed the one I want to use just to uh, declutter the bench a little bit. In the previous video we got as far as seeing an error message on the monitor and it was saying that there was a read error when it was trying to access the floppy disk. I calibrated the replacement floppy drive controller I see. I had to replace the floppy drive controller uh, the original one had failed. Calibrated the new one and now I'm getting a different message. I'll just quickly demonstrate that. I'll dim the lights again so you can see or at least hopefully see what's on the screen. We'll boot this up. Okay and uh, the message this time is it's saying non-Gemini system disk. Let's turn the lights back on. So the software was written by a company called Gemini, hence the message. But it's getting further and what it means this time is that the system is getting as far as reading the first sector from the uh, disk and it's copying that to a buffer. The way it buffers data is a bit odd because of the way the block sizes differ between what's actually stored on the disk and what the operating system, CPM operating system is expecting. Um, but it is fairly easy to deal with but the important thing to bear in mind is that during this boot process that buffer is located at memory address zero upwards. So what we should be able to see is if we try to boot the machine it should start by trying to read the first sector from the first side of the floppy disk. It should copy that data to the RAM buffer in the computer and we should be able to use the monitor program to examine that. Now unfortunately you're not going to be able to see it too clearly. I will do this but um, I don't really have the space to get uh, a monitor into camera view so I'll have to carry on using the small monitor. Uh, so we'll just um, reboot the machine, let it go through the first part of the boot process and then we'll examine the uh, memory to see what has been read from disk. I'll dim the lights again so you can see a bit more clearly what's going on. We're getting the not a Gemini system disk showing again but what we'll do now is try and examine the memory in the buffer region. So although you probably can't see this, memory at address 0 has a value of 3 the next address is 09 and so forth. Now those values, if we have a quick look at the uh, actual values from the disk, I got these using Cryoflux and read the disk uh, as a raw file, we can see those values exactly match what's actually being read by the machine into the buffer. So it seems the machine can successfully read the data from the disk so what I've done as you can see is attach the logic analyzer. We'll quickly move the camera so you can see what's being captured and we'll see if we can figure out why we're getting this error message. I've got the logic analyzer set up for a Z80. I've got all the lines connected that we are currently interested in and I've also disassembled the firmware from the ROM and um, I've printed off a page here that we are particularly interested in and um, the reason I've got this particular page is this is the part of the code that checks the first two bytes of the floppy disk image so it looks at the first two bytes that come off the floppy disk and that's how the system determines if it's a proper boot disk. So I've put a few comments on this already um, but the bit we're interested in is where it comes in here it loads um, the value pointed to by HL and it also um, 
point the DE register to address says F124 here, that's because the start of the ROM is at F000, so it's actually address 124 down here that we're interested in. And so the two bytes of interest, it does this for the first two bytes, the bytes we're interested in are 3E and 61. So we'll boot up the machine with the analyzer going, capture some data and see what we get. So I'll arm the analyzer, I'll reset the computer so it recaptures the data and we should see something appear on the analyzer. The analyzer was indeed triggered. And what we're looking for here is, it'll go through the first time, it will check the byte at address 124 to see if that's 3E. So we'll scroll through. So I scrolled across to this part of the code. So we got to address um, F115. As I said, the code is offset to uh, F000. So where it says zero here, we can read that as an F on the analyzer. So this is the part we're interested in. It's loading the value pointed to by register DE, um, which in this case is set to uh, address 124, which is down here. And you can see that the value there um, is 3E. And it's then comparing that against the value pointed to by the HL register, which in this case is initialized to the first byte of the buffer that's used to store the data from the disk. So what we're seeing on the analyzer is the value coming from the uh, RAM. And if you recall, the two first bytes in RAM were 3E and 09. So that's what it's reading from the actual disk. So here you can see it's reading a value of 3E. Now that does actually match what we're expecting to see in the ROM. So that's this byte here. So that's 3E. The next byte, if we run around this loop another time, uh, it thinks, uh, the ROM thinks it should be a value of 61. So we'll scroll forward. And we're going around the same loop again, except this time we're seeing a value that it's reading from RAM of 09 and it's comparing that against the value here of 61, and obviously they don't match. We know the 09 is what it's read from the disk because we can see that in RAM. Uh, that's what we looked at in the uh, RAM buffer on the CRT display. And again, if we look at the ROM, uh, the uh, disk listing, we can see that the value there is incorrect as far as the ROM is concerned. However, if we look at the value for a Mimi 802 ROM, then you can see that the values expected are indeed 3E and 09. So that does confirm that the disk we're trying to boot from is for a Mimi 802 and does not match this particular machine, which we believe is an 801. So in other words, these two bytes that are in this run that it's comparing don't match what the boot disk is expecting to see and hence we're getting this error message saying it's the wrong boot disk. So this is one of the issues you get with old machines like this is that over the years people tend to forget which disk they have and what they're for and uh, although these disks were sent with this machine I don't believe they are boot disks for a Mimi 801. I think they are for an 802. So I'll just move the camera back down. So just to clarify where we've got to so far, it does seem that the machine can now successfully read the contents of the floppy disk. However, when they come into the machine and the buffer is checked to make sure the data from the disk is correct, it's flagging it up as being incorrect. So there's only a few possibilities here. Either the floppy disk is corrupt but he did send two floppy disks and both uh, give the same first two bytes. So I doubt they've both been corrupt in the same way. It is of course possible one of them is a copy of the other one, but there are other differences as well. So I don't think that's the case. 
Um, it's possible that the ROM in this machine has been changed at some point and is now the incorrect ROM. It does say 801 on the screen when it tries to boot up, so I'm pretty sure it is an 801 ROM, but it is of course possible that the ROM is corrupt. Um, there are a few other possibilities, but either way the machine's not going to boot uh, with either this ROM uh, or this um, floppy disk. The combination doesn't match and the machine is flagging it as an error. But it doesn't actually mean that the machine is getting most of the way through the first part of the boot process. And I think this machine would now boot if we had a viable and matching boot disk. So step forward, but um, next job of course is to try and find a disk that we can boot from.